The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Sedino Mayerczyk was born in 1953 in Zelina, Slovakia, then a part of Czechoslovakia. He studied at the School for Arts and Crafts and Academy of Fine Arts in Bratislava, Slovakia, and at the Academy of Fine Arts in Rome, Italy, where he received an MFA in figure sculpture. He escaped from Czechoslovakia and came to the United States in 1985 as a political refugee. He left behind his entire family, friends, and colleagues, sacrificing everything for personal and political freedom. Zadino's sculptures were exhibited in many solo and group shows, both in the U.S. and Europe. He is the recipient of various awards, including two Pollock Krasner grants and a Fulbright Fellowship. He also participated in the residency program at New York's Millay Colony for the Arts. My name is Deno Majerčak and I was born in Czechoslovakia, former Czechoslovakia in Slovakia. And first I would like to introduce you who never seen sculpture class to a sculpture class. This should start right away. So those are my students carving stone and sometimes they carve wood. They do use different materials. This is a fellow that you're gonna hear at the end. He's from Iran. So a lot of activity in sculpture class is outside because of the nature of the uh, art. This is mold making. So the student is applying plaster on clay sculpture so we can make replica of the clay sculpture. <clears throat> I'm an immigrant. I escaped in 1984 and came through refugee camp in Italy to United States at that date. And people are not asking me anymore when I come back, except when I'm critical. <laughs> then, some, <laughs> then some people tell me, go back. Very <laughs> Too late for that, you know. <laughs> OK, so this was <clears throat> kind of two things that started my project for Smithsonian. Many visual artists emigrated to America before me. And they are <clears throat> quite well known. And there are many students, usually more than half in my class, that are from different countries. So those two elements, with me being immigrant, I thought that um, the theme of last year, Smithsonian Fellowship, will resonate with my students as it, it is very kind of personal to me. Uh, so how am I going to do it? <clears throat> There are many sculptors who immigrated to America from different countries. So I asked my students to do a little bit of research before we went to the museums. And the next question was, how am I going to get them excited? Because I didn't want to, uh, them to do essays or papers, as usual. Because in the past, my students always have to go to the museum. Every semester since I came here, they went to the museum, pick up the sculpture, they wrote the paper, paper, essay, and, you know, okay, good grade, and that was it. So this time, uh, based also what I learned in, uh, during the meetings with my fellows, I decided to go a bit more with fun and excitement kind of against the tradition. So I said to my students, when we come to the museums, you can pretend to be a famous sculptor. This is my team on very cold October morning in last year. So those of the people who came on time, then we got some, we got some more, but it was very cold. 
In the past, when I took my students to the museums or sculpture gardens, I was a typical professor, you know, lecturing in front of the sculpture, talking for five minutes or ten, and <coughs> losing my students gradually. So I decided to go and try something, something new. So what, what is the best way to break the cold and, and have some fun? You probably figured that out. The students wanted to get the Rodin sculpture to bring it to life. And nobody yelled at us. The sculpture gardens are kind of great for that. So I am the famous sculptor, not me, who immigrated to the USA team, started with, to help my students, I brought some portraits of famous sculptors that are in uh, Smithsonian collections. So those are two of them. Those are another two. And if you pay attention, you know who that is. Of course, just the Louis Bourgeois. So that student did, did uh, research of Louis Bourgeois and, and did actually a huge video, 25 minutes video with her daughter when they had conversation Louis Nevelson, Louis Bourgeois, talking about the past, the countries, families, and everything. I'm not going to show you that. That's over the limit. OK, so the students saw the sculpture. And without kind of hesitation or, or preparation, they started to improvise. Kind of like, hi, I'm all close Oldenburg. This is my sculpture. I kind of like it how they put it. What do you think? Ask their fellow students about this. And there were some, you know, back and forth. That's another um, of uh, my students pretended to be Christo for a little. Not bad, not bad. He's famous. Yeah. And uh, video. I asked my students to take like 40 seconds videos. Hello, everyone. I'm the modern version of Jack Lipschitz. I was born in. 1891 and died in 1973 and this piece that you see right here is bronze and I base myself in creative this picture by thinking of the Mayan culture um, as you can see you can see eyes um, a little bit of resemblance with the Mayan um, the shape of the body the head um, also how it stands. Usually if you go to a Mayan place you will see similar things like this. So I base myself on this and hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so she's talking about that sculpture made by uh, Jacques Lipschitz who came from Lithuania. And again, try to kind of improvise like, oh, this is my sculpture and I did it uh, in year this and that. Hello, Mr. Oldenburg. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing fine. That's very good to hear. Um, I couldn't help but notice that your piece was entitled a soft bathtub ghost version. Is it actually haunted? <laughs> hmm. Why do you think these ghost pictures are kept here? Good. I suppose that's a good point. Is it now safe for bathing use? All right then, I will remember that. Thank you for your time. So as you can see, they're not professional videos. They are made on, on I, iPhones and, and they were not rehearsed. There were not too many takes, you know, retakes or whatever. It, it, it was more about fun and actually the guards came and looked. They, they never told us, you know, you cannot do that. In the they, they were just intrigued as everybody else because it was something, something different. Um, one of my students, when, when I was giving them idea, yeah, you can become famous artist, and also you can take a famous artist sculpture, and that sculpture can do something in a museum. So this student, video please, she did a take on the fountain, but 
by Marcel Duchamp when the fountain is visiting the museum. So as we were going through the museums and having f more fun than was uh, allowed, I guess, <laughs> some, some guards actually joined in. And they were not scolding us. They were not saying, oh, you should stop. The guards usually tell you that, don't take pictures, don't touch sculptures, don't do this. Actually, yeah, this, guy, this guy you know, started to talk and uh, even promised to take a sculpture class with me sometimes <laughs> in, in the past. Uh, so we'll see. I'm going to hold him to the promise. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you study that imaginary sculpture as a second language class that I teach, that gives you some, you know, conversational skills with uh, knowledgeable people like the museum guards. So I'm going to tell you kind of secret. They, when you go to sculptures to uh, sculpture garden, not only there are sculptures that you can touch, there are sculptures that you can actually play with, be silly with, as my students gladly, you know, explored. So they did so many things on those chairs, and you know, I'm going around uh, shooting videos, uh, and it was great fun. This student kind of summed it up very nicely. I also asked my sculpture students to make a sculpture that is good enough to be in the museum. So these are the sculptures by my students that they hoping to see in Smithsonian sometimes. So that's Bo Kyung from China. That's Irina from Russia, Assemblage. And Savita from India. I think they have a chance, right? <laughs> OK, one more thing. And I would like to have him in, in, in the background because I would like to advance the slide to the next one. So he was not only excellent student of sculpture, he's an accomplished musician. He played all around me in, in New York, in LA and elsewhere. And we need, we need more people like that. If there was a wall built around United States or if no immigrants were allowed to come to this country, we would not have those people. And that's <coughs> the short, there is very short list. There are hundreds of people that we know they came because they are known in sports, in music, in art, in anything else. And I'm absolutely sure some of my students will make the list. So <coughs> there are also many not so famous immigrants that many of us new or met or meeting every day. There are students that are, you know, in different jobs. And they make definitely this country better in many, many areas, not just the ones that I pointed out. And I would like to thank you to all of us. And I mean literally, because everybody in this room is in the past immigrant. Some of us came recently, 
Some of your families came 200 years back, doesn't matter. We are all immigrants. So thank you to us. <laughs>